Hello everyone, welcome back to the Going Zero Waste YouTube channel. I'm Katherine Kellogg and today I'm going to be going over a few ways that you can avoid food waste in your own home. Food waste is a huge environmental issue. On average, 40% of all the food goes to waste in America, which I think is absolutely mind blowing. 40%, that's insane. That's an insane amount of food waste, especially when so many people go hungry. That just does not seem right. So today I'm going to be going over several different ways that you can avoid food waste in your own life, as well as talking about some of the larger overarching things that are happening in our food systems. For instance, did you know that many of our fruits and vegetables have beauty standards? Yeah, it's insane. It's absolutely absurd. There's this one clip, I'm gonna try and find it, where it shows people measuring bananas. They have a measuring tape, and if it's in the either end of the measuring tape, if the bananas are slightly too big or slightly too small, they have to be thrown away. Bell peppers have to stand. Grocery stores want them to be perfect and to stand upright. So if they have any sort of indentation where they're wobbly and they like fall over, they're cut. And especially in light of all the food shortages that were happening because of supply chain, trying to get things moved from restaurants to grocery stores, panic buying, all that sort of stuff, it's even crazier to think that 40% of that food didn't even make it to the shelves because it wasn't pretty enough. I feel pretty, oh so pretty. One of my all-time favorite documentaries is the Wasted documentary, where they go into more of the things about food waste and our supply chains and all the different ways that we can work to have a better food system. Because if food waste were a country, it would be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases behind the US and China. So obviously one easy way for many of us to have a better impact in our own lives, to be more sustainable, is to simply avoid food waste. So I'm gonna jump in with a few tips. So up first, just start shopping a little smarter. I find that oftentimes I buy a little bit too much food. So by shopping smarter, making a list, making sure that everything I'm buying is actually going to be used and put to good use when I get home is one of the best ways that I can avoid food waste. Number two, make sure that when you get home, you are storing your food properly. One of my favorite hacks for storing food, for keeping foods fresher, is to store my carrots submerged in water. They stay super crisp and super crunchy, as well as making sure when I store my greens, I like to store them in an airtight container that has a cloth towel over the top to absorb any excess moisture. A great question to ask yourself when it comes to food is what is their enemy? So for instance, carrots, Air. Air is their number one enemy. It makes them limp, it makes them soggy. So by putting them in water, you're able to keep them crisp and fresh. This also works for celery. And for greens, their enemy is going to be air and moisture. So by keeping them in an airtight bowl covered with a reusable cloth towel, you're gonna to absorb any of that excess moisture and keep them crisp for weeks. I have actually kept spinach this way for two weeks, romaine this way for two weeks, kale, especially the, I believe it's the lacinto kale, chopped up, put that in there, that keeps it fresh for up to three weeks. So these are just some simple hacks that you can use to make sure that you're keeping your foods fresh for as long as possible. The third thing that I like to do is to make sure that when I get home from the grocery store, I'm actually taking time to prep my foods. It's amazing how taking one simple hour to chop, dice, throw into a container, make sure that it's easy for me to grab my produce and actually eat it is one of the best ways that I can avoid it going to waste. I find that so many of the times when we go to the grocery store, we all have excellent intentions about making these delicious meals with all this food that we just got, but then when it actually comes time to make dinner, we're like, oh, the last thing I wanna do is chop ahead of cauliflower, so maybe I'll just order some takeout. Mm. There's something wrong with ordering takeout every now and then, especially during this time. I've been trying to support my local businesses, want to support my local restaurants, whom I love, but also want to make sure that we're not wasting the food that we've already bought. So chop it when you get home, take a few minutes, and I think that you'll find that you'll be reaching for a lot of that produce and won't let it wilt in the crisper drawer until you have to throw it out. 
The next thing I want to talk about is expiration dates. So expiration dates are completely arbitrary. No producer or manufacturer can tell you exactly when something is going to expire. And there are so many terms. I believe there are 20 terms, but the most common three are sell by, use by, and best by. And they don't really mean anything. Also, as a manufacturer, would I not want to make that date as soon as possible so you can go out and buy more of my product? Honey has an expiration date on it, which is kind of crazy because honey has been found from ancient Egyptian times and is still perfectly edible. So many of these things don't go bad at all. They're just putting dates on it to try and protect themselves. The only really way to tell if something is bad is with a taste test, with a smell test, and just using your best judgment. Oftentimes my best judgment is, is it growing mold? And if the answer is no, I'm probably going to eat it. Which brings me to my next point, which even if there is one bad speck on my pepper, let's say one of my peppers has one black speck, I just cut the one bad speck off. Now keep in mind, I am not a doctor or a nutritionist. I am on the internet and I am just sharing with you what I do, so make sure you use your best judgment. But if I have one brown spot on a carrot, I'm just gonna cut the brown spot off. If I have one brown spot on an apple, I'm probably gonna cut it off. If I just have one eye on a potato or it sprouted in one area, I'm probably just gonna cut that off and use the rest of the fruit and vegetable. I have never had an issue doing this. Take that advice as you will. My next tip is to cook with your scraps. So if you are peeling your potatoes and you're gonna make some mashed potatoes, take your potato skins, toss them in some olive oil, throw them in the oven, bake them up. They're gonna get so crispy. They're gonna be so delicious. Oh, you're not gonna be able to stop eating them. Things like your broccoli stems. You can peel them with a peeler so that way you get the nice tender stalk, dice it up, throw that in a stir fry. You can also use to blend it. You can even cut it really thin, turn it into a slaw. You can also take things like all of your onion skins and your garlic skins and your carrot tops and throw those in a crock pot full of water. Let that turn into a delicious vegetable stock. There's so many different ways that you can use the ends and tops and stems and all of these things to create really delicious food that's not only going to save you money, it's also going to be way better for the planet. My next tip is to regrow. I know this has been quite the trend on Instagram lately, at least if you are in the sustainability space. And speaking of Instagram, are you following me? Because you should be. I'm gonna link to my handle, pull out your phone, go to my Instagram, here's my handle, please give me a follow. I have all sorts of tips and tricks on living more sustainably there as well as regrowing some of your foods. You can regrow things like your romaine lettuce, your green onions, leeks, celery. The list goes on and on of all of these things that you can get just a little bit more life out of. I ran an experiment in 2018 where I regrew lettuce, let it grow roots, and then planted it. But every time I've planted it, it's kind of died off. So my recommendation is just to regrow it. You'll get a little bit more. You can use it for sandwiches. You can add it to your salad. And it's just a great way to keep your food working for you. You. And then my last tip is to compost. I am obsessed with composting. I love composting so, so, so much. If you have not started composting, I urge you, this is one of the best things that you can do for the environment. On average, all right, about to drop a lot of knowledge here, about to drop a lot of facts. So composting is one of the best things you can do for the environment because organic matter does not break down in a landfill. Landfills are not aerated, so you can't really have organic matter decomposing. Instead, it lives in this limbo state and it releases methane. Methane on average is 30 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. And 16% of all methane emissions in the United States come from landfills. So not only can you reduce your trash by almost 60% by composting, you're also gonna have a really positive impact on the environment. So I urge you, urge you, urge you to compost. I have some great blog posts on composting. I've also been asked to film a few videos on composting, which I'm going to do, and I will have those linked up as soon as they are ready, but it is one of my passion projects. I'm going to link to some of those resources down below because I truly believe that composting is amazing.
I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Press that big red subscribe button to be notified when new videos are coming out, and I will see you next week with a new video.